Ms. Lons, you claim that while filming your popular reality TV show, a DNA test determined that the man you believed was your daughter Elite's father was not. After the results came in, you revealed to Elite that her uncle, the defendant, Mr. Randolph, may be her biological father. Ms. Noel, you state that it was devastating to find out that the man you believed was your dad was not, and you now believe that his brother is your father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Randolph, you claim that even though both you and your brother had a sexual relationship with Ms. Lons, you do not believe you are her biological father either. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Now, in full disclosure, I must say, I know this family. I have counseled this family. So with that said, Ms. Lons, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Um, tell the court, why is it so important to resolve these issues today? Well, this happened like 30 years ago, and you know, my past has always haunted me no matter what. I'm a recovering drug addict and a lot of more other things. I don't hang on the streets, and I don't run amok with the gang members, and I have not been back to jail. So I, I learned a lot from it. I could be dead for the things I used to do, but I'm not gonna quit and tell my daughter and me put closure on who her father is. I'm very proud of you. Because let's be honest, most people know you as Keisha Cole's mother. They think of you and they say, oh, the antics, the drama. But I know you. I've talked to you. You're a mother. You have heart. And you know what? Most importantly, you have courage. And these tears is for her. She still has to live with my mistakes. And I'm here to correct it. That's what mothers do. Ms. Noel, I want to talk to you. Yes. Every little girl wants to know who her biological father is. And so when it was determined that the man you thought was your biological father was not, please explain to the court how that affected you. I mean, I felt as if I should have never had tried to even take that step. And I had closed up. I closed up with my mom. I also closed up with Vic, which is the guy that originally we, you know, tested. And, I, and I'm not going to lie, I, it, it's a, a bitter thing for me. I used to hide this story, you know what I mean? I didn't want anybody to... Like I said, I didn't want to judge my mom, but I didn't want to be judged for it, neither. You know what I mean? But there's When you say you used to I hide wanna, the story, tell me what you used to... I mean, to. I just didn't tell anybody that I didn't know who my biological father was. You were ashamed of that? Yes, absolutely. So, Mr. Randolph, six okay. years ago on their reality show... When it was determined that Nephi's father, your, your brother, was not her biological father. Right. And that you could. No. You never were made aware of that. No, until some people called me from around the country and said, Frankie said on national television it's that their uncle could be her father. And I'm like, what? At that point, did you reach out to Ms. Lons? Did you reach out to Ms. Noel? Well, I, you, is, well I, that's my I, question. I, Once you heard it, like, I feel like... I why didn't, why didn't you contact father. me? Hold on, let's talk one I at a time. I tried to reach Frankie, I didn't but was reached. unsuccessful in doing so. So you did try to reach out to Ms. Yes, Lons? because I'm not in the business of trying to hurt children. When you reached out and you didn't get an answer, what did you do? I can't believe this. The next thing I know, we're here. Gave it to God. Did you ever feel badly about sleeping with your brother's girl? Oh, hold on, Your Honor. Let me say this in, in my defense in that regard. Sure. There was... We had a group that consisted of seven members. Our popularity not, and, don't have to take and our them. bad behavior at the time. A lot of things happened. It sure did. A, a lot of things happened, not with just Frankie, but with other people, too. So, Ms. Noel, talk to me about your childhood. I actually was raised by an amazing family. Um, I was adopted at three months, but there's still a part of me that, you know what I mean, wanted to know. I didn't find out that I was adopted until I was 11 years old. From the time I was adopted up until 11, you couldn't tell me that this is, wasn't my family. So I was extremely embarrassed. And, you know, after that, I lashed out throughout my, throughout my teenage years. It's cute. You know what I mean? Yes. First of all, that family that I gave custody to, gave you to, was my family first. Mm -hmm. They took care of me before you were born. I didn't want to drag you through my mess. 
Thank so you. it's the choices and decisions that I made is the reason why the woman that you are today. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> So, Ms. Noel, you decided you wanted to find your biological father. I wanted to find my biological family in general. You know what I mean? I didn't know who my mother was. I didn't, you know, they didn't keep it from me, but I had never seen Frankie's face. I didn't know who my family was, you know what I mean? So after that, yes, I, you know, I wanted to know, you know, who my other siblings were. You know, it was deep. It got deep. You started to believe your sister Nephi's father was your biological father. You know, when we met, everybody just, you know, constantly said, you guys look so much alike, you guys look so much alike. And I'm like, well, duh, because we're sisters. But none of the other siblings looked as much alike as me and my sister. Your sister, yeah, she wanted to know. out of sister love, wanted so bad for you and her to have the same father. Okay, well, it wasn't, and it hurt me more. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Did you ever see your birth certificate? Were you able to look at it and see if there was a man listed? And if so, who that person was? Well, yeah, about 18 years old, you know, my adopted mother felt that I was old enough. And David Noel was the guy on my birth certificate. And so, you know, we went into a search for that. So I ended up find the address on him and I knocked on the door and I gave him the story and he told me absolutely not. I only reproduce boys. I have five boys and I don't, I don't have that girls. Was me. Frankie, yes. he was on the birth certificate. Yes. Was he? But that's he... because I was with him while I was carrying him. He actually told me that he just wanted to do the right thing at the time, which was to, to sign the birth certificate. Yeah. And so, so you basically, and he agreed, you, you're gonna sign this birth certificate. So she I didn't will have- I make a, him sign anything. He volunteered. I was gonna put father unknown. But he said, I wanna sign this birth certificate. Because my mother didn't raise us like that. And I understood, you know, I, like, I didn't hold anything against him. Actually, I respected him more for being honest. So, Mr. Randolph, do you remember having a relationship with Ms. Lons? I have a relationship with Ms. Lons. I really do. And it goes back to 1974. All right. But the relationship is like this. I'm part of a dance group called the Black Resurgence, who are internationally known for boogaloo and robot and strutting. Her sister and one of, our, one of the members of our group, her other sister, another member of the group, her and my brother and their friend and I became, were involved in a relationship. But we had that situation, the group of us, had that situation going on with various sets of girls around the neighborhood. Oh, say groupies. When we met Frankie back then, uh, we did what we did. Had I known that it was even suspected that I was the father of any child, I've always stepped up to the plate. Were you ever even aware she was pregnant? Was I she... know she was pregnant just about every time she was pregnant. But, I but just think... my brother's, that's my brother's girlfriend. It was your assertion that Ms. Lons was also intimate with other members of the band. And we have another member of your band here today. Yeah, I'd like to hear from him. Jerome, will you please escort Mr. Robertson yep. in the courtroom, please? Oh, boy. So, uh, let's get this party started. Well, sir. Well, yeah. Mr. Robertson, thank you for joining us today. We have been here discussing the paternity as it relates to Miss Noel. We've heard testimony from Mr. Randolph, your bandmate, talked about back in the day that you all had lots of sexual encounters <laughs> with fans, we'll say that politely, and that perhaps you, Mr. Robertson, and Miss Lons had a sexual encounter or encounters as well. Did you have a sexual relationship with Miss Lons? Yes, I did, Your Honor. You did. What was the nature of your relationship with her? We was a group back there and then, back in the day, and we were one of the hottest groups on the circuit at that time coming up. And I was one of the guys that... Uh, All the girls to, wanted. They used to call me Don Juan, so... Uh, <laughs> I, it was just a group thing, you know? Uh, I never fell in love with none of them. It's just... So you're oh, basically right. saying you were having... Many sexual relationships. With you never <laughs> were in a girlfriend, boyfriend, committed no. relationship. It wasn't a relationship. It was never a relationship. You can't say for certain you did not 
sleep with Ms. Lons during the window of conception? No, you I don't can't know. Say that. I, I really can't say that. If you know you've had a sexual relationship with Ms. Lons, when you see her having children and they are a part of this band, extended family slash village, <laughs> wouldn't a man then say, if I was intimate with her, could this child possibly be mine? No, I did not think that, ma'am, because back in the day, it was not like that. I, and, and... I'm serious about this. This is not funny to me. It's not this is not a joke. Not anymore. I have a beautiful young woman next to me, 30 years old, that has come here for my help, and she gonna get it. Mm. I want some answers. Okay. Yeah. So, t- Ms. Noel, <laughs> have you ever heard about Mr. Robertson <laughs> as a potential? Never. Ms. Lyons has stood here and basically admitted her mistake. Never. This is what I've done. This is what I was doing. You have also said we were very sexually active. I don't understand how little people keep appearing and you don't ever say to yourself, could, could this, this child be mine? If Elite was my child, why didn't somebody say something to me 30 years ago? Well, how, because how can I? years ago, I Not didn't you. know. I, Elite... God bless your heart. Darling, I wish nothing but the best for you. You look so much like Nefertiria and my children till, yes, we really did think Vic was your father, especially because of Frankie and his relationship. But no way under God's green earth did I ever think that she was my child. I'm just trying to put it in the right perspective to where my daughter won't look at me like I'm trailer park trash. I know how badly you want the answers. I know that. And, and I, I know how much you're... enough to blame it on another man because at this point to me, it matters. What matters to me is how she's feel. And that's what Either matters way, to me. I forgive my mom, you know what I mean? And I'm so thankful that, you know, we have a chance to build a relationship. But at the end of the day, like, I deserve to know everything. Yes. And... It's just and, that and... simple. And your aunt. Ms. Like, I'm and, and, not a child anymore. I want you to take a moment, and I want you to explain to these men and to your mother how living with this pain has affected you. I mean, I respect you guys for being honest, most importantly, but at the end of the day, you guys have to take some sort of responsibility for your actions. I know it's easy to say, we were children, we were doing this, we were popular. Like, okay, I get that part, but, like... At some point, like, you have to take responsibility for your actions back then. And I can see in your eyes that this really is hurtful. This is, this is yeah, hard to not take a in. a joke. I thought that I was over it, um, but I'm not. And you know? it's caused a wedge between you and your mom. Big. Explain. Our relationship really hasn't been the same since I did the first DNA test. I'm still holding a few grudges, not only against my mother, but whoever my father is. I don't want to be judgmental towards my mother because I know that due to the circumstances and being in the streets and being on drugs, and I don't want to judge her for that. But I, on another note, I feel like, why do I have to continue to suffer, you know, from the things that happened in the past, the things that I couldn't control then and the things that I can't control now? You're a beautiful, smart young woman. Thank you. Talented. Thank you. But you are a human being. Yeah. And you have a right to know... I do. ...who your father is. I do. And I have answers for you. Okay. Jerome, the envelope, please. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Lons versus Randolph Robertson, and as to whether Larry Robertson is her biological father... It has been determined by this court. Mr. Robertson, you are not her father. Are you okay, Ms. Noel? I'm fine. Are you ready for the next result? Yes. In the case of Lons versus Randolph Robertson, as it pertains to 30-year-old elite Noel, and as to whether William Ronnie Randolph III is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Randolph, 
you are not her father. Mm. Oh. I'm very sorry, Miss Noel. Well, as long as you want to keep looking, we don't look. Thank you. That's it. Ms. Hendricks, you and your husband previously appeared in court because you suspected he was being unfaithful. Yes, Your Honor. She was naked on the bed, and Chris was in there. Oh, I'm perfectly aware of what's at the state. There's the girls and then the baby, I mean... You're expecting? Yeah, I'm... Oh, my. Months. Mr. Hendricks was asked, had he had sex with his ex? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. <laughs> Mrs. Hendricks, the shoe is now on the other foot. Your husband is accusing you of cheating and says he is not the father of your one-month-old baby, Chris Jr. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hendricks, you say you confirmed your wife has been unfaithful and there is no way her child is yours. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So you're also petitioning the court for a lie detector test to determine the extent of your wife's cheating. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'll start with you, Ms. Hendricks. How do you feel knowing your husband is denying your baby? I'm very pissed off because he's your twin. I mean, he's his twin. And you don't think he has any reason to deny the child? No. I mean, I was very honest with him with what happened before, and he has taken it to the extent of denying our son, even though I've done everything he wanted me to do. <gasps> Named him after him, circumcised him, did everything. Mr. Hendricks, she says she did everything you wanted her to do, even named the child after you. You don't believe the child is yours? I just, I don't feel that bond like I do with my other children. I mean, it... it I even he, named he, him after your dad, I mean. He barely looks like me. I'm not seeing any characteristics. He don't have any of my personal features. I just... I just, I don't know. You must I'm be not blind. Seeing, I'm not seeing it as, as well as the others. He has no reason to doubt me because I was honest with you about what happened. I always have been. So take me back to the situation that's surrounding the paternity doubt relating to baby Christopher. Last September, um, my, uh, his Facebook messages were coming to my phone and it was one of his coworkers and she was saying very sexual things to him. About 10 days later, I had found out that I had endometrial cancer and I had gotten real sick and... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I'm in remission now, thank, thank, thank God. Thank God, yes, amen. And um, whenever I was diagnosed with all of that, I just got very upset and with everything that was going on with him, I was like, okay, well, you're cheating, so... I mean, I'm just going to go and do whatever. I wanted to live like I was dying because that's what I felt like I was doing. So we're in a situation now where Ms. Hendricks doesn't trust you. She's got this diagnosis of cancer that she has to deal with, and she admittedly starts living like she's dying, drinking, mm -hmm. partying, refusing and doing things that... Refusing to come home. Mm, she, did, she never came home. At night? Never. Mm -hmm. She always would stay be at, at my family member's house. She'd stay house. at family member's house. You knew where I was. I, I mean, I'm a very predictable person. You would come home long enough to change your clothes, take a shower, leave again. Mm. Okay. You and were you know exactly where I and was. And it was because... so uncomfortable with our past and with our life that I didn't even stay in the house. I took our car and I wound up driving around town, wasting gas, falling asleep in it on dirt roads because I couldn't go home. Well, maybe when I got the phone call, whenever I had cancer, you told me, well, with everything's going on, should I care? Mm. Wait a minute. Did you say that, Mr. Hendricks? To an extent. No, those were his exact words. To an extent. Oh, now that's cruel. We so were, you all were in a very bad place. We were, it was bad. we were fighting very bad. I mean, that was, like I said, around 10 days uh, after I found out all that stuff. So now I want to understand from you where this pattern she developed going out, drinking, not coming home. This is the behavior that you felt indicated that she potentially could be sleeping with somebody else. Yeah, there was... Explain. There was, we had everybody over at our house drinking. We had started working out our issues. I came into the, into the room, and they this were already into a conversation. Who are they? Was, who's they? Ma Carrie and her... Miss well, Hendricks her, yes, and a family member. And a family member. Okay. So I was like, so what is it that you're supposed to tell me? And she says, nothing. And she looks at this family member and says, I put it on such and such's grave that nothing happened. And she and the family member looked at her and said, "You're you're a bull-faced liar. You straight took, came to my house that very next night and said you did it." 
I hadn't. Now that she, you slept with that somebody she had else? Sexual relations with this other gentleman. That did not come from me. That came from the family member that I was around. You know that. But at the same time, she keeps telling but everybody she was too drunk that she don't remember if anything happened. Or I not. did say that. Miss Hendricks, what is your side of the story? If you're saying you didn't sleep with this man, it's kind of hard for Mr. Hendricks to believe when your family members are saying you did. Okay. Like I said, I'd been hanging out with them all. We, my, my brother had started a bonfire and everything. One of his friends that he'd hung out with and worked with came over. While we were hanging out, we were drinking whiskey, and we, I had ended up kissing him. And I immediately called him and asked him to come and get me. And I told him what happened. And he said, where are you? I told him. He came, and he ended up leaving without me. And I remember up to that point, and then after that, I don't. I mean, I don't remember because I kept drinking. She remembers kissing him in the kitchen, though. I do. So at that point, you pretty much blacked out or you have no memory recall because you were that drunk. Yes, I was. And then shortly after that, you find out you're pregnant. I found out I was pregnant four months later. So you find out you're pregnant? Yes. Do you tell Mr. Hendricks immediately, I'm pregnant? I was at the... I had actually went into the emergency room because I had an internal hernia. Well, my surgeon had ordered a pregnancy test, all this, you know, because if I had had to go in for surgery. So they came back and said, you do realize you're very early pregnant. My HCG level was only 22. So, I mean, he had just implanted. Which is the reason why I started doubting it right off the bat. Why? Because we, we went through extensive fertility medicine to have our four-year-old daughter. Tried for five years. Unprotected sex. No, 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 nothing. So four years after we have our first daughter, she winds up pregnant. Just out of the blue, after our little issues and after she goes and starts visiting and, and hanging out, she winds up pregnant. I don't find that fair whenever he's bringing up the treatments I went through because I was 170 pounds more and the doctor even told you if I'd lose weight, it'd be a lot easier for me to get pregnant. But you didn't for four years. And then you have the, then you have the surgery. It's you not go, like you go on a little party it's rant. It's straightforward, so. You start hanging out with another guy and then all of a sudden you wind up pregnant. You don't find that funny at all. No, because I know what Nothing I was doing, all. and I know I was with you only. Okay. Well, that's... but Miss Hendricks, I, you know, I have to say this. You just testified that on that night in question, you didn't know what happened. But I'm a very honest person, and I did call and tell him immediately. And I even asked him to come and get me, so, I mean, he... Oh, no, me. I... Listen, I can respect that as a woman. You say, you know what? I'm too drunk. I just did something that I shouldn't do, shouldn't have done. Let me call my husband. Let me call my family. Come get me, because I know I'm a hot mess over here. But what we do have to take into account is that you don't know what happened after that. And based upon your testimony, he does have reason to doubt. I even went to the extent we went and paid for a 4D ultrasound just, were... to, see, just to see if there were any kind of characteristics that looked like me. And he looks just like you. All I see is I mean, blob. even in a 4D. You, you t- it's, it's, that's, do you it not was see too his early. eyes? You don't nose. see a blob. That's a baby. Well, you can see the nose and eyes, but it's, yeah. it was too early. We, you know, it was kind of but, a waste of money. But, to, but your point is, is that you were that worried about it. Oh, I'm, I was very concerned. I wanted to know right then. I mean, we fought over this. I mean, we fought over these pictures so much because he's like, I don't think he looks like me. I said, how, how do you figure? I mean... You know it's bad when you're evaluating a baby in the womb. My uterus is... (laughs) That's when it's bad. No, no, and that's why we're here, because that, that... This is what we try to make people understand, is that relationships that go off the rails often produce situations like this, paternity situations, where, I mean, literally, this baby trying to grow and mature and get ready to make its debut into this world is, like, under a microscope being and features being evaluated because of a paternity issue. I've got this notch in my ear that my other kids have. This one don't even have it. Oh, baloney. He don't have any His of the characteristics small. He was that premature. I have. So you're saying there are Nothing. physical characteristics you don't see. And I can see as you talk about this, Mr. Hendricks, it really upsets you. It does. Because I lost both my fathers and I want my last name to go on. When I pass, I'm not seeing it with this one. And as you look at and this And this one beautiful is actually baby. named after me and my father. Mm-hmm. So the, the tribute to this is so insane that it, it crushes me even just looking at him. Is he mine? Is he not mine? Do, even as you, as you look at this picture? As, as I look at that picture, 
I just, I don't have the connection. It went to the extent when we were in the hospital that when he was born, he was not breathing for a minute and a half. Finds out he's got a blood disorder. That is crazy because it's fighting with her blood. But the more I got to thinking about it, none of my other kids have ever had this problem. Our four-year-old daughter does not have this problem. And so you're wondering if potentially this has something to do with the fact that the baby may have another biological father. Correct. But it's not a genetic disorder. It's not. It's my blood type is O positive. The baby's is A positive. And O and A don't mix. And somehow my blood uh, passed through the barrier of the placenta. And that's what happened. My antibodies started attacking his blood cells. Well, but if I'm his father, how come it didn't do it to our four year old daughter? If you were at the if you were at the hospital instead of off gallivanting because you were mad at me, you would have been able to know what the doctor said and explain. Well, Miss Hendricks, that's why we're here in this courtroom is because we'd like to get doubt cleared out, right? Yes, ma'am. And because of that, we want to call on Dr. Jamila Gator to give her expertise on this particular condition baby Christopher encountered. Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Gator into the courtroom? Right up to the witness stand. Watch your step. Hi, Dr. Gator. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are here talking about a paternity issue relating to baby Christopher. And you've had an opportunity to review the court file, am I correct? Yes. And so Ms. Hendricks has explained that there was some issue between blood transfer or as the baby was in the womb. But Mr. Hendricks says... No person in his family has ever experienced any like thing like this, nor did their older child that they have together. We need to understand if this blood issue is connected in any way to paternity. Can you tell us about what this issue is? Sure. So, like DNA, blood type is passed down from parent to child. A child will inherit one type from each parent. There's type O, A, and B. And so, typically, in ABO and compatibility, the mother has type O, the baby has a different type, such as A or B. And what happens is, is the mother's body sees that blood as foreign, and the immune system starts to attack it and create something called antibodies, which attacks the baby's blood and can destroy the blood cells, and the baby can get very sick. Typically, the blood supply between mom and baby are kept separate, but we do know in almost every pregnancy that cells do pass back and forth. And so okay. if the baby's blood passes into the mother's bloodstream and her immune system mounts an attack, then you can have an ABO incompatibility. So with ABO incompatibility, can this be an indication of a paternity issue? Indirectly it can because you expect the parent's blood type not to change. And so with ABO incompatibility, unlike other blood type incompatibilities, it typically happens in the first pregnancy and then continues with subsequent pregnancies between father and child. And it's just because the blood types pass in between and we don't exactly understand how the barrier breaks down and the blood cells pass in between. So it could happen in the first pregnancy or any subsequent pregnancy. So with that said, because of this particular medical condition, we don't know for certain. So the stakes are very high here. Mr. Hendricks, I can see this really affects you. This family is my planet. It's what I breathe. This one here just completes my solar system. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. wow. So you want this to be your child? 130%. I want them to be mine so we could be happy again. Put all this, you know, BS behind us and go forward, be a family. Well, that's why we're here. Yes, ma'am. I have the paternity results for you and I have the lie detector results you requested as well. We will start with the paternity results. Jerome, the envelope, please. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Hendrix versus Hendrix. In the case of Hendrix versus Hendrix. When it comes to one month old, Christopher James Hendrix. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Hendricks, 
You are the father. I told you. Thank you. Told you you had no reason. I mean, you, you didn't need to doubt me. Miss Hendricks, he did. And there was reason It was to there. Doubt. I'm sorry. We, we, we it, got it the answer there. we wanted. But he did have reason to doubt. That's what you have to understand. And you all have to stop beating yourselves up and each other up over this because now we were able to get the truth and the clarity you needed on at least this issue, the paternity question, so that this baby no longer has that question hanging over its head. He now knows that he's from a long line of Christophers. <laughs>